Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. This is episode 6 of our 4 Science series. You guys seem to really like our extension length versus power and air hose versus power episodes, and even our full length dive into impact universals, which we'll be diving into again soon with sockets. But on that topic of sockets, we recently tested how chrome versus shallow versus deep impact socket mass difference seemed to affect power on our torque test dyno. We theorized and the results seem to agree that within this already quite large socket size and mass of one and a half inches or 38 millimeter socket size, we may already be up against a diminishing returns sort of ceiling if there is something to be said about socket mass and socket design when it comes to impact torque transfer. Today I feel like we were finally able to answer that question and about special weighted sockets on air and cordless impacts to boot with these sockets shown here. This episode is brought to you by you guys. We do have some cool new t-shirts we designed just in time for Father's Day and you can now get a Google Doc link from us of our entire rank database anytime you purchase anything and forward that order to torquerank at gmail.com. You'll get a link in reply. We have full the rank list you normally see here as well as these tools ranked solely by their highest output, which we'll start showing as well. Um, cordless tools only. And really with this data, you can rank them however you want and see models we put there sometimes even before the episode is live. We were able to bring our test socket size down while keeping the thread size large enough to not stretch or mangle completely by using this drive bolt from an impact rated puller set we have. This is a 7 8 inch coarse thread and 15 16 inch hex drive, allowing for around 40% smaller sockets by diameter compared to the normal ones we use. This allows us to use a stubby Capri 15 16 impact socket, a 12 point shallow Craftsman from the 70s that was my grandfather's, good luck little buddy, a modern 15 16 inch Craftsman shallow impact socket, a deep Makita impact socket, which should be quite a step up in mass. A thin wall, deep lug nut socket. Remove that protective sleeve here and the wall thickness is a bit less. Then finally, an Ingersoll Rand power socket. This one costs us damn near a hundred bucks, but the size you would normally be using with this is like a 19 millimeter on a Honda crank bolt. And well, that's not cheap either actually, that's $59. According to the box though, 50% more torque. Well, if that's true, it will be interesting to see how the mass of these other normal looking impact sockets and non-impact sockets play into that equation. And it looks like they sent us the wrong size for our $92. Okay, a few days later, we got the shallow chrome 12 point stubby impact, shallow, thin wall, deep, and a 15 16 inch power socket. Now realistically, our dyno is not calibrated for this 7 8 inch coarse thread drive bolt with this tiny drive head friction surface. So the figures here will not actually be representative of anything by themselves. These aren't actual foot pounds compared to any standard and won't be giving an accurate representation of the impact wrench's power at all. But what it will show is the percentage difference between each socket used and if there is one to be seen in general. So keep in mind these are not actual power runs, just looking for changes between each run. Due to that, we're going to call these figures beans instead of foot pounds from here on out, which frankly we often do anyways. The theory behind the relationship between socket mass and power is specific to impact wrenches. This does not apply to your hand wrenches at home or torque wrenches. Just like with our extensions episode, on sockets you don't really lose any power at all when applying torque by hand because this is sort of a constant and linear application of force. When we're talking impact mechanisms, there's power lost all over the place because we're transferring blows here and often inefficiently transferring them. On our chrome versus impact rated and cheap versus expensive extension episode, Many of our viewers suspected the interface tolerance between the anvil and the extension or socket and extension is what's bleeding power in our setup. Yet our snap-on examples were far more used than the others and did quite well still and had dimensionally slightly less tight square drives. Ingersoll Rand feels like they've solved the power bleeding crisis of impact tools, however, and they have just the tourniquet to sell you for a handsome fee and that's called the power socket. Diving into the patent for the power socket, 
their engineers and patent attorneys spell it out completely where they feel this lost power goes. They contend, and this is their words, that the junction between the impact wrench's anvil and socket, and further the socket and the fastener, both experience a spring effect with each blow, basically like your hammer rebounding off of an anvil. The amount your hammer is accelerated off the anvil in this case is the amount of input force wasted in that scenario. IR calls these values spring rates, shown here as K1 and K2, and these quote, convert a portion of the kinetic energy created by the impact wrench into potential energy, thereby diminishing the kinetic energy transferred from the impact wrench to the fastener and reducing the amount of torque delivered overall. So we imagine the power socket's aim is to, instead of squandering this potential energy, either A, reduce that value, or B, store it for converting into kinetic energy during the next hammer blow. And what better design to store and transfer potential energy than a flywheel? By the looks of it, IR has also worked up and submitted designs for this that included multiple different types of actual springs inside with cavities, I assume with aim to reduce the recoil of that hammer effect on the anvil and transfer that potential energy or basically delayed kinetic energy into the spring and therefore eventually the socket. But when looking at the final design, it appears IR didn't feel this was necessary, so they simply, albeit drastically, moved the moment of inertia of a socket to that of a socket with a flywheel, and this achieved the potential energy conversion and angular momentum effect that they were after. If that's true, and we'll see today, there's more than one way to skin a cat in that regard when it comes to a flywheel-ish design. Now, we're not even certain if actual flywheel math applies here because we're not talking about really RPM, we're talking about acceleration, but if lessening the spring rate, as IR calls it, is the goal, simply adding mass should have a similar effect. And that's the route Lyle took with their weighted impact sockets, which have a similar reputation for putting your impact wrench on steroids on tough bolts like Honda cranks. We couldn't find a 15 16 inch or 24 millimeter weighted socket that was half inch drive anywhere to work with this test setup for today. But essentially the thinking there is the same practice, but using a different method. By adding mass, the same goal is theoretically achieved. It's just that adding diameter gets there sooner and with less mass and material needed overall. And it looks like IR did get rid of the opening pass-throughs, the sort of windows here that were used in the original design and pictures, as it was probably more expensive to make it that way, and really, you're just removing some of that useful mass anyways. But that's enough mathematical mumbo-jumbo for today. As we like to say on this channel, we don't always have to understand the principles at work. We did all of our thinking when we created this dyno rig, and now it does the thinking for us. So let's see, once and for all, if socket type and socket mass affect power in a significant way. Up first is our baseline run. This is the shallow impact socket, sort of the everyday socket you grab to beat on something. It weighs 0.353 pounds. So that's 422 beans. As a reminder, this impact wrench usually makes 600 foot-pounds on our dyno. Let's go down in mass now. Here's the stubby impact socket, which is actually the lightest of the bunch, at 0.227 pounds. That's 405 beans down from 420. Frankly, we were surprised to see any change, but all three runs we did showed this effect. But 3.5% at the end of the day, not notable or even something we'd call proof of a theory. Let's see how the slightly heavier but thinner wall 12 point chrome does, or really if it even survives. And that face shield going right on. The chrome makes 403 compared to the stubby's 405. So that's a wash, similar mass, similar power so far. Let's see if that holds true as we pack on the weight with this deep Makita impact socket. It is our heaviest traditional socket today at 0.771 pounds, almost three and a half times the weight of the stubby socket.
that's 437 beans versus the 422 of our baseline and the 405 of the stubby. That's that same 3.5% again, only this time on top of the baseline, for a total of a 7% spread across socket types. We did notice with a longer socket you get quite a bit more jumbling around on the impact tool. It's sort of interesting and harder to keep it aligned and planted from rattling around. Next up is a different version of a deep impact socket with a slightly thinner wall, although this one weighed 0.74 pounds, so only slightly less than that Makita Deep. So our first surprise of the day, the thin wall lug nut socket made 445. And it was no fluke, back to back to back runs, all like this for some reason. We noticed actually that while the walls are thinner, this protective lug nut socket had more metal material at the bottom, like it was thicker there from being less deep than the traditional Makita deep impact socket. Maybe that played a part in its 5.5 to 10% gain over the other socket types. We're not sure. Then again, we're not talking night and day power differences here either. If we're after night and day power differences, this is the socket we're grabbing. So let's find out. Do we get $100 worth of extra beans for our Benjamin? Here's the Ingersoll Rand power socket. So yeah, basically off the charts. We had to show you it this way first because honestly, this is how we experience the thing. We watch this thing just keep climbing and climbing 400, 500, 550, 562 beans. We must have run this test five times because we frankly couldn't believe it. From the outset, we weren't sure if A, there was a noticeable difference with one of these and B, if there was, would our dyno actually show it? IR's 50% claim comes from dynamic torque. Here's them showing that. It's basically a dynamic torque digital skidmore. This is measuring force per blow. We thought we might see a jump in the beginning on our graph from dynamic torque increases, but then maybe trailing off for a unimpressive total. But what we saw was a jump and then them sort of coming together. Then when things got good and tight and the other sockets sort of flatlined, this one just took off. So it does increase dynamic torque down low and increases total max torque in this case in the form of at least 25%, which may not sound like a lot compared to their 50% claim, but add 25% to this Mako gun and its max run from its episode, and that's 742 foot-pounds, or basically beating out everything except for the South Main Auto Mystery Gun. Let's see if this phenomenon translates to cordless power. Here's the M18 Gen 2 baseline run. Remember, these are beans and have nothing to do with M18's actual power capability, which as we know is quite high. That's 262, not really winning any prizes with those flashy numbers, but it does make sense as it's around the same percentage down from the Mako gun as their original max torque runs from their episodes. Now here's the weighted socket from IR. That's 332 beans, up just 20%, so huge gains still, but not quite the gains we saw from air tool testing. It could be hammer mass, but we saw similar gains from a mini air impact we also tested. IR saw a similar effect in their testing with an air impact, which saw up to 62% gains, while their cordless saw 51% in dynamic torque. We theorize it may have more to do with the difference of impact mechanisms between air and cordless in this case. Air tool impact mechanisms like a twin hammer spin a full 360 degrees and then come to a complete stop transferring all that kinetic energy that the air motor has spun up into the anvil at once, stopping the assembly in the process. Cordless mechanisms only rotate 180 degrees before they fall into that next tooth and due to the spring tension used to reset the mechanism without stalling that electric motor, there's probably not a lot of spring rate, as IR calls it, going on before the next blow. The air tool having a larger, less frequent blow with the whole assembly briefly recoiling may play more into the losses IR describes, 
which the socket design is helping to mitigate more effectively in this case compared to cordless. Even though we were not able to test a thick wall style socket like Lyle's here today, we believe based on it using more mass but in a different way, and all of the videos and testimonies, we've seen that it works in much the same way as we've seen with the power socket today. While it may be socket size specific and dependent on you having the extra space to use it, weighted sockets with up to 25% real extra beans can make the hefty price some of these bring look pretty reasonable when you consider the size, weight, and cost brands charge you for impact tools that are 25% more powerful. If you like videos like this one, we'll be doing more of them, so subscribe, hit like, and thank you very much for watching.